Jack. Some folks can handle the truth. But for those that can, stick around. You're in for a treat with my friend, Frank. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. I want to give a shout out to all of our viewers and listeners. I want to thank all of our prayer warriors and partners. To God be the glory, great things he has done. And uh, it was 159 years ago this week that my ancestor, Joseph Gale Shelton, was at Ford's Theater the night that President Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. And my ancestor was one of the first to respond. And he and about four other men helped carry the commander-in-chief across the street to the Peterson house the night he died. Uh, Lincoln died actually the very next morning, but Lincoln died on Good Friday, and the Lord Jesus Christ died on Good Friday. Lincoln freed the shackled slaves, and the Lord freed us enslaved to sin. I love Lincoln. He's the most quoted American in history. He put in God we trust on our currency. He made Thanksgiving a national holiday. He made it the National Day of Prayer. And he's used more biblical references from any president, from George Washington to Joseph R. Biden. And I really admire Lincoln, but it was a Shelton. It carried Lincoln. If you're one of the first people to respond to me today, go to frank at frankshelton.com. I will send you a copy of my book, Carrying Greatness, From the Womb to the Tomb. We all carry greatness. Number two, God makes no junk. And uh, the great Harlem Globetrotter, Metalark Lemon, graciously wrote, a forward. Uh, USA gold medalist Joe Delos wrote an endorsement. Sheila Walsh, the first thing apparent about Frank Shelton is passion for Christ. The second thing is that he really cares about people and wants us to understand the life-changing mysteries of the kingdom of God. When a seemingly insignificant life is surrounded wholly to our great God, then the so-called impossible becomes possible in a way of life. Welcome to the Great Adventure, and that was from Sheila Warsh, the Women of Faith conference speaker and Christian co-host known around the world. Billy Graham's grandson, um, Anthony Tavigian, wrote, quote, My friend Frank is a man on fire. He has one thing to say, Jesus Christ loves you, and no matter what, this book is an incredible reminder to those who have a relationship with Jesus and an incredible informer to those seeking Christ that they may made you already with greatness. Greatness comes to light when we believe and obey what God tells you to do. I couldn't think of a better person than my friend Frank Shelton to write about how we as humans were born with greatness instilled in us. He is truly the most encouraging person that I've ever met. Frank is a gifted author, a phenomenal teacher, and a voice of truth and encouragement that will bless your soul. God knows he's blessed mine. That's the grandson of Billy Graham. What an honor. If you email me today, frank at frankshelton.com, they were on Amazon for over 20. I will give you a free book autographed with free shipping, the first five to send me your address. Today's going to be a great day. Greetings from the nation's capital. It's a beautiful spring day. And um, I just got back from the Peach State. I spoke four times in three days in two churches last week. My dear friend Dakota Culberson, his wife Lacey, and uh, they had me come back and preach for my first time at the basement. Uh, Christian, well, country recording artist Chris McDaniel, one of the best keyboardists in the country, came as a gift, a friend to me, and did worship. And that brother brought the house down, lifting him up. And uh, man, we had a time, my dear friends Brian and Jamie Johnson, their little daughter Presley, are you ready for this? They drove five hours each way, 10 hours round trip, booked a hotel just to come be part of that Friday night service. I'm telling you, it's great to have friends in your corner. I had the honor also Saturday, Sunday morning, Sunday night to return and preach for my dear friend, Pastor R.C. Smith, and my cherished friends from the Tabernacle of Praise in Calhoun. And I'm telling you, God moved in a great way and uh, pastor was admitted to the hospital and after preaching the saturday night sermon i rushed and we were able to spend some time with him but i want to publicly thank you not only we love you proud for you praying for you but thank you all for all you've done for our ministry um it is a team effort and it's an honor to be on team jesus with you 
While out in Illinois last week, I caught up with um, Pastor Miles Holmes. I love that brother. And I connected again with a friend who's become a stronger friend, Tristan. And he is an entrepreneur, a philanthropist. He's a real estate mogul. And he's also in full-time ministry. Imagine that. And God has blessed him. And we met for breakfast. He picked me up in his new C8 Corvette. And man, that thing will fly. And, you know, Billy Graham said it best, it's not wrong to have nice things, it's wrong when nice things have us. And, you know, if you've been blessed, whether it be with a car or nice clothes or fancy shoes or a little bit of bling, when you got the bling, just promote the king. People be like, man, how'd you get that car? Just say something like, man, isn't God good? And, you know, if God did it for them, he can do it for you. And uh, so, you know, we all been blessed, and uh, let's just give God some praise. Um... While I was in Missouri at Real Talk Radio, had the honor to be on three shows in one day, and while all eyes were still on the Baltimore Bridge, and I just found out this week, the FBI has finally formally announced an investigation into it, and I was sharing about a painting, you'll see it on the screen, uh, called The Broken Bridge. It was painted in 1945, and if you notice the painting, the same part where the bridge was broken is exactly where the Francis Scott Key Memorial is today. The irony is the man that painted the picture in 1945, the Broken Bridge, his last name was Dolly, D-A-L-I. What are the odds? The name of the cargo ship that hit that Baltimore bridge was named Dolly, D-A-L-I. While on the radio show, I also said, while all eyes are on Baltimore, I think we need to keep our eyes on the Golden Gate Bridge. Francis Scott Key, Francis in Spanish is Francisco. The bridge I've been on it is in San Francisco. Four days after I said that, bam, this week, Palestinian protesters blocked the Golden Gate Grids. My mentor said, quote, if you don't see it before you see it, most people will never see it. We come from 160-year detectives from our Shelton family in D.C., and if you remember the first Die Hard, there was a Sergeant Powell who was on duty, just got some Twinkies, and then all hell breaks loose at Nakatoma Towers. My wife Ruth Andrew and I was actually at that same building a year ago in December, and uh, we were at a dinner that Sylvester Stallone was. We could actually see the tower next to our building. And when the skyscrapers were literally on fire, the jovial sergeant, the uh, police guy, was having a conversation with Bruce Willis, John McClain. And the irony is that same cop also played in Family Matters, who was with uh, Steve Urkel. And Andrew and I met Steve the month before in Virginia. And as he was having a conversation with John McClain, he said, uh, I think they're going after the lights. Some of those in the crowd and the superiors were rolling their eyes and thinking the sergeant's lost his mind. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And when one of his superiors asked him, how do you know they're going after the lights? He said, just call it a hunch. And then they laughed even more and teased him. And then the moment after he said that, even the superiors were quoting him because he was right. They're going after the lights. As Christians, we have not a hunch, but a holy hunch and the Holy Spirit is the world's greatest detective. God gives us as born again believers, as kids of the king, discernment to see through the lies while promoting the truth. I pray it doesn't happen, but I wouldn't be surprised one day if that iconic Golden Gate Bridge ends up in the water. There's been many movies over the years showing that the bridge will be in the ocean one day. The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, has a movie that came out five years ago called San Andreas. And darn if they don't have some issues with the Golden Gate Bridge. I also shared in times of war, they begin to eliminate bridges. One, to restrict travel. Two, to hinder commerce. And three, the movement of goods and supplies. Last week, 26 barges broke loose on the Ohio River and shut down multiple bridges. I shared on social media and hundreds shared my message. Dr. Simon Gold this week shared what I wrote four years ago in my book, Urgency. Quote, newly obtained documents confirm that 15 government agency knew 
That Fauci NIH lab was a partner with Wuhan on a proposal to engineer a highly transmissible coronavirus in 2018. The conspiracy theories was right, quote, end of quote. Chuck Calestro wrote yesterday what I said in 2020. Echo Health's Peter Daszak revealed that 15,000 COVID-19 samples were in freezers in Wuhan. I personally called a Hollywood actress in April 2020, and I told her I'm certain that they already have the vax. They just can't tip their hand because it would look too obvious. She called me back the next week and said, Frank, you're absolutely true. A lady who lives in the hills just outside of Hollywood already has virals for the vaccine. My friend, when the book came out, it was the number one new release on all of Amazon to the glory of God. God gave me this. I said this in 2020. The vaccine wasn't created to combat COVID-19. COVID-19 was created to usher in the vax. It was the Trojan horse. I shared last week while I was on the radio that the Statue of Liberty was hit. You can see a picture of it and that God may be trying to get our attention. Now, there will be some folks that will be like, yeah, Frank, that's a high point. It's a metal object. It's been hit many times before. Yes, but it's never been struck about the same time when everything else around us is going. Airplanes falling out of the sky, bridges collapsing, California Highway 1 is into the ocean, barges are breaking up bridges, and it could also be symbolic of our country. Christianity can survive without America, but America cannot survive without Christianity. If we've ever needed the Lord, it's now more than ever. That was a great quote from Jensen Franklin. Soon as I shared with Peggy Hubbard on the radio, God must be trying to get our attention, I said Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder could see what's going on. Within 57 minutes of that statement from me on the air in St. Louis, Missouri, an earthquake rattled New York and New Jersey, and it started out of a small town called White House Station, New Jersey. I had to even Google, was there such a town? White House, New Jersey. Just recently, last night, major 911 outages hit the entire state of South Dakota. Over a dozen other states, Nebraska, Nevada, Texas, Iowa, Florida, Wisconsin, and Kentucky, the situation is still developing and more outages are occurring. See, if you're putting your hope in what you can see, the Bible says what we cannot see is eternal. What you can see is temporal. That's why when the Twin Towers fell on 9-11, someone recently in Baltimore was on the 6 o'clock news weeping, saying that bridge that I saw my whole life is no longer. And sadly, some of us are putting our hope, our confidence, our moral compass, and things that we can see. I want to encourage you, for those listening under the sound of my voice, you better listen to the one who you cannot see because the Lord will not fail you. Rick Joyner is a pastor out of South Carolina. I had the honor to preach twice at his church at a men's conference. He took the picture you'll now see on the screen of the eclipse, and it looks like the cross is through it. Talking about the eclipse, sadly, there was a few people that actually said that Christ would return on that day. I would have never dared share that. I was on Fox News years ago, and uh, they were talking about Harold Camping, who was a preacher from the past, now with the Lord, and he went on record multiple times saying he's coming on this day, this day, this day. And to be honest, he was sincere but sincerely wrong, and he made a lot of people look foolish. And they asked me on national television in New York, Lauren Green, chief religion contributor with Fox News, she said, well, Harold says he's coming tomorrow. Do you believe that? And I said, absolutely not. Number one, the fact that he put a time to it tells me he's wrong because no one knows the hour except for God himself. And But I do give him credit when most people aren't looking up or even talking about the return of Christ. But the answer is not if he was coming tomorrow. The answer is, are you ready to meet God if he came tonight? Shout out to Alan Iverson, who recently got a statue in Philadelphia. It was at the Sixers practice facility. My son Andrew and I were able to recently congratulate Alan, and uh, we knew he was getting the statue. Andrew 
thanked him for the way he played the game. We were able to speak a blessing over him. And um, Alan agrees that true success is not just getting a statue, but it's knowing the Savior. PGA golfer Scotty Scheffler just won the Masters in Augusta. I've had the honor to be on that beautiful property. He said the morning before winning it all, quote, I knew my identity is secure in Christ and his cross. And whether I win or not, I'm going to be all right. Talk about being whole and one. When our identity is in Jesus, we are winners in the game of life. And he ended up winning the whole thing. And he not only got a green jacket, more importantly, he knows God. This year's master winner knows the master. Praise the Lord, our new ministry app will be available next week, and I pray it will bless you. It will have a Bible, scripture verses on it, our upcoming calendar, our radio show, our TV show, full-length sermons and interviews with friends around the world, and I hope it will encourage you. You're even going to have a section for my wife, Ruth, and I'll be sharing what's on her heart. Pray for us. This week, I'm going to be flying to Europe, Lord willing. I'm preaching in Bucharest, Romania. Have the honor to preach four times in five days at four different venues. And I'm thankful for Pastor Florian and my dear friend Cornell, and who's going to translate. We're going to fly together. And uh, one of the venues is a 4,000-seat venue. The last time I was there, Grammy winner Andrea Pacelli was actually singing in the same concert hall, I've been told. And uh, pray that God does a great work in Europe as I preach at the God Loves Romania. With just a few moments left, I just want to encourage you. I've given you a lot of bad news. I've given you a lot of news, but here's the thing. It's not doom and gloom. I still got some good news. The gospel literally means good news. It was said that Billy Graham preached with a Bible in one hand and actually the local newspaper in the other. And I'm just giving you something to chew on. I heard of a story not long ago of American missionary where him and his bride spent 50 years serving in the Congo. And uh, they were excited to finally retire, to come back to the States and just live their twilight years together, but serving God for 50 years as missionaries to Africa. As they came home, they couldn't believe it, but to their surprise, there was a huge ticker tape parade. There was a band with a huge banner, confetti falling out of the sky, screaming, welcome home. And tears began to well up in the missionary's face. They were so touched to think this parade was for them. But something happened as they continued to walk down that street getting off the dock. They noticed where it looked like all eyes were on them. The moment they passed, the crowd's eyes were on someone behind them. And when they looked, they did not know it. But the President of the United States had just come back from a three-week goodwill tour to Africa. The year was like 1965. And all the fanfare, the parade, the party wasn't for the missionary. It was for the president who was on the boat and didn't even know it. A holy anger rose up inside of more so the man than the wife and the one that gave his life serving God actually got mad at God. And uh, his wife said, honey, it's okay. You know, we'll get our reward one day. And he said, no, this isn't fair. We spent 50 years serving God in Africa. The president is in Africa for two or three weeks, and they throw him a huge party. And she said, honey, it's okay. Why don't you just pray? And he was so angry, he couldn't even pray. And after a couple days, she came up to him and with a smile and said, I don't know if you've gotten your answer, but I've heard from the Lord and we've gotten our answer. And he said, oh, yeah, well, what did God say? He said, honey, we're not home yet. The parade on earth that looked like the parade had passed them by and thought that God forgot them. Well, the parade they saw was temporal. But when they got to heaven, it was eternal. And if you thought the parade down there was wild, when you see the angels and people going crazy for Christ, you'll realize that God didn't forget you. One of my favorite songs is by a group called Mercy Me. I've had the honor to preach with them. And the last chapter of my book is called Almost Home. And guys, I'm telling you, it's been a little tough down here. Lots going on, wars and rumors of wars, pestilence. But I'm telling you, I've read the end of the book. 
and we win and we're already winners. But today, if you feel like a loser, just remember as kids of the King, we already won and our victory is right around the corner because we're almost home. God bless you and go with God. Yeah, yeah, so I should be in the next hour or so. Yeah, no, absolutely, no, no problem. We'll get it, uh, we'll get it sorted. <coughs> no, I've, I've already spoken to them, um, and they said it would be fine. Now you can't change your past, but you can determine your destiny by deciding for Christ. But Christ can change your past. He died on the cross so that all the sins you've ever committed, all the things you've ever done wrong are forgiven. What do you have to do? You have to repent of your sins. That means to be willing to change your way of living. You may have no power to do it. You may not have power to give up some of those habits you know are wrong. You may not have power to fall in love with your wife again. You may not have power to change your whole life that you know needs to be changed. But if you surrender to Christ, He'll give you the power. You say, well, Billy, I don't know what else to do. I've been baptized, I joined the church and so forth, but I don't really have peace and joy and power in my life, all that you're talking about. How do I get it? Jesus Christ said, I am the way. Come to Christ. He will give you a new strength and a new power and a new joy and a new peace and a purpose for living. Every person that ever lived has to make the same choice. It's either the world and its pleasures and its gods or it's Christ. Which is it for you? Who are you choosing? Who are you voting for? choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Oh yes, there's pleasure in sin for a short time. But it's soon over. The hangover comes. And there's nothing you can do about it. It's going to be there. Choose Christ and there'll never be a hangover except joy and peace. And it's an urgent decision because to delay makes the right decision harder. Indecision in itself is a choice. Not to decide is to decide not to. 
If you have a ticket for a flight to Atlanta tonight and can't decide whether to go or not, if you wait past the departure time, the choice will have been made. The plane will take off without you. Decisions are made whether we make them or not. Time decides if you will not. And time always decides against you. There's a lonely arena in the depths of your heart where the greatest battle of life must be fought alone. That's your decision about Christ. Your parents can't make it for you. The church can't make it for you. Your friends can't make it for you. Your girlfriend, your boyfriend can't make it for you. You have to make it yourself. And you must decide tonight. There are hundreds of people here tonight that have to decide tonight. And your decision tonight, yes or no, will decide where you'll be a hundred years from now. If you're not sure that you're ready to meet God, if you're not sure you're going to heaven, and you're not sure that your sins are forgiven, you come and make sure tonight. I believe that none of you are here by accident tonight. I believe that you're here on this particular night because this is the night that you are to meet God in a new way and receive Him into your heart. Frank Shelton worked two decades on Capitol Hill and left by faith to preach the gospel in 2007. His family worked over 150 years in Washington protecting presidents and serving the congressional community. His ancestor carried President Abraham Lincoln from Ford's Theater and his maternal ancestor hand planted the cherry blossoms. Very few have as deep roots in D.C. Urgency is one's minister's journey leading up to the lockdown in March 2020. Buckle up, this book is a game changer for some and life changer for others. Available now at Amazon stores worldwide. For an autographed copy, visit frankshelton.com. If you would like to bring Frank to your next event or outreach, visit www.frankshelton.com.